All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about, and maybe probably making some people kind of upset today, but we are going back to survival. And today we are going to be talking about the most important survival skill, in my opinion, that everyone loves to hate. And this is something that I found, unfortunately, like a universal rule when I've talked to a lot of people who like to go outside, whether it's recreationally or seriously. Um, this is something that a lot of people either agree on and they they believe in or they actually think it is pure and utter rubbish and so today we are going to be talking about the survival skill of batoning now previously speaking in latter years batoning was essentially a go-to skill that was recognized and <clears throat> just broadly accepted as a good thing to know how to do and most importantly to have knives that were capable of doing. Now in the kind of present age of outdoors and bushcrafting and survival, a lot of people disagree and do not think that um, batoning is a valuable skill. And today we're going to go over some of the reasons why I think those people are just completely wrong. And this is something that, like I said, I've had discussions with people in real life. I've had plenty of discussions online. And like I said, I cannot overemphasize that I genuinely believe that people that, that just wholeheartedly think that batoning or beating your knife through a piece of wood is just so wrong. They would never do it. They hate it. They hate the action. And they think more importantly, and especially online. They think that anyone that does this is an idiot or is someone who doesn't know what they're doing. And so I think that that opinion is so far from reality or so far removed from reality. It is just absolutely infuriating. Now, I know that people are already be writing comments and explaining why am I not or asking why am I not outside. People will probably also say that because I'm not outside, I'm not really, you know, accredited to actually talk about this. And those people can say whatever the heck they want. But at the end of the day, we're talking about wilderness skills and the it doesn't really matter where I talk about those wilderness skills. So we're doing it right here and I just don't really care to be honest. So honestly, let's jump into batoning. So the biggest reason why batoning exists, in my opinion, and I think the thing that most people underestimate when it comes down to the actual actions of batoning is in it and in its usefulness is this. The first one for me, and the thing that I lay said everyone seems to overlook, but myself having operated in some you know wetter environments and in environments that are usually dry but can get an incredible amount of rain soak or just moisture in practically overnight. The biggest advantage to batoning and knowing how to baton, having knives that are capable of it, is if you find yourself in a situation where you need to access dry wood for kindling and fire starting especially, being able to baton is the only way that you can realistically start a fire. So many people, and I mean so many people, and a mind-numbing amount of people tell me that, you know, they don't need to or you don't need to start a fire because I have, <clears throat> you know, plenty of pine boughs, I have birch bark, I have plenty of resources around me that I can just use and burn. I don't obviously need to have the ability to baton because there are these resources. What people fail to understand, though, when it comes comes down to it is the fact that if those things, so especially things like pine boughs or spruce boughs, get water saturated or waterlogged for whatever reason, say it's been raining for the past few days, they are completely useless. So you do have to understand that when it comes to batoning, it's not always necessarily trying to prove how tough and how strong and how durable a knife is. But there are legitimate practical purposes, such as accessing dry wood that may be in a larger piece of wood, like say a standing dead piece of wood that's about six inches in diameter, you can guarantee, even if it's been raining for the past week, you can pretty much guarantee, like bet your life, that the core of that standing dead tree that's about six inches round is going to have dry wood. And if you know how to baton and you can buck that tree properly, you can get down to that wood very quickly and subsequently get dry wood 
get kindling, start a fire. That's the entire purpose of survival. Another valuable resource that batoning offers, if you do choose to use it, is being able to fell trees without an ax. Now, this does have some limitations to it. I'm not saying you can go up, especially with something like this Bark River Knives Bravo 1, I'm not saying you can go up and baton a tree down or fell a tree with this that's, you know, six, eight inches in diameter. Probably won't happen. However, one thing that I have legit legitimately done and multiple survivalists have shown this and instructed it is if you are looking or trying to start a fire or sorry build a shelter and all you have is a knife on you a good stout robust sturdy knife you can use a knife like a bravo one to um, fell and take down wrist thick trees. Get enough wrist thick trees it reasonably quick enough and you can assemble a shelter very quickly. And in another video I'm going to be doing here in the near future, I am going to really talk about the universal and most important survival skills and part of that is being able to make shelter very quickly. That is something that if you can manage to do, you are pretty much guaranteed to live for however long. So one of those things, once again, that batoning allows you to do is baton and fell wrist thick trees that you can use to build shelters. So this is another one that once again, if you happen to be down on your luck for whatever reason, say you don't have an ax, you don't have a hatchet, it went missing, broke, um, all very real you know, situations, you can press a knife, a good solid knife, through batoning into this situation and with good effect. So these are the two biggest reasons why I think batoning is not only a you know, idea, but a still very valid and very good idea. A lot of people, especially nowadays in the survival community, love to discount it, and they say that it's unnecessary use, some may say abuse, and within reality, you know, can it be in certain situations? Yes, there are situations where people just want to test their knives, see how durable they are, and they put their knives through a lot of torture. Now, once again, I don't necessarily care. It's your tools, your stuff, do what you want. But I'm not necessarily saying that you have to, you know, baton the hardest piece of hickory, the largest piece that your knife will reasonably, you know, withstand. However, there are very good use cases, especially in my opinion and in my own climate, my own practice, I have legitimately found good use in being able to access dry, uh, wood that you can use for kindling and fire starting through the use of batoning your knife. Now, like I said, I'm not saying that every time I go to start a fire or every time I'm out camping or, you know, bushcrafting that I'm batoning my knives, but it is an important enough skill that it blows my mind that people legitimately will sit there and say that, oh, it's just not useful. You can survive with a Swiss Army knife and it's just fine. And truth be told, in a good condition, like say it's the middle of summer and you know, you're know you not dealing with any super adverse uh, environments or confines, um, you can totally survive with a Swiss Army knife. However, I think a lot of what ends up coming down with survival and <clears throat> survival and bushcrafting is it's very similar to bear defense. Can you kill a grizzly bear with a nine mil? The truth is yes, it has actually been done. There are multiple reported cases of a charging grizzly bear being killed with a nine mil. However, it's the effectiveness, the reliability, the repeatability of being able to do that. And that's why, you know, um, organizations like the Alaska Department of Fish and Game, when they send their wildlife techs and their wildlife biologists out, they send them out with 12 gauge shotguns. Why? Because a nine mil can stop a bear, but a 12 gauge shotgun will stop a bear. And so once again, if you choose to deny, you know, um, things like batoning and stuff like that, can you make it out? Can you, you know, survive with a Swiss Army knife? Yes. But something like a full-sized fixed blade that is a full tang, that is something that is going to really, you know, be an effective survival knife will give you a better shot at survival. So it once again goes back to, can it be done? Yes, a Swiss Army knife or something inadequate can be used, but something like a, you know, once again, full-sized fixed blade survival knife will give you better survival.
chances. So it's important to understand the dichotomy there. So that's why I think batoning, despite all odds, is still one of the most valuable skills you can learn. I still recommend and teach batoning right alongside feather sticking and a handful of other crucial skills to help with shelter building, to help with fire starting. And once again, these two singular abilities, if you can start fires incredibly fast in any condition, if you can build shelters incredibly fast in any condition, you're basically guaranteed to survive. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.